factors and the, con the restrictions of each of these communities. We can find a way, in fact, by definition, and all you entrepreneurs in the room will agree, entrepreneurs are the people that always find the one way to get it done, not the 99 reasons why it's hard. Okay, we always focus on there's got to be some way to do this, not keep telling me the ways that it won't work. We can find a way to build those tools in those communities and build those ecosystems. It's our job for everybody to grab the hand of an entrepreneur near you and help guide them towards their future. I actually proposed at the G8 uh, summit, I was chairing a track on uh, entrepreneurship, and I actually proposed take an entrepreneur to work day. <laughs> in the States, they have take your child to work day. So I kind of upgraded it a little bit. But literally, because I go back and forth, I have a lot of friends and they're in this room that work in government and, private sec and in public sector, and I work a lot in the private sector, there are days where I'm going back and forth and I think, wow, we gotta do something to help everybody understand each other better. The same reason that I come to all these countries to spend time in the field, in your homes, in your lives, and learn what it takes for you to succeed, I have the same thought about the fact that when we're trying to form partnerships between all of us, we don't work in the same environment. What my life looks like every day is not the same as my friends in the State Department, our offices, our procedures, our policies. So if we had taken Entrepreneur to Work Day, and I'm only half joking, if we spent time in each other's lives, we would wind up designing a solution that would make us all win. That is something we just don't naturally do today, but the more, I mean, you guys take me to work a lot, in the US government anyway, and I learn a lot from doing that. We have got to build that ecosystem around us. So here's my observations of the three things that entrepreneurs need to succeed. And I'm gonna give this a little bit broader but I thought about this a lot, and I thought about this traveling around the world, and I thought about this talking to entrepreneurs here in the region. Just as an FYI, last night I went to Abu Dhabi, and I actually went to do a, a promo on CNN about this event today, which at least one person, a couple of people came in and didn't know about this conference, saw it on CNN, and are here today in the room. Um, but while I was there, I took an advantage when I was in the CNN building waiting for the broadcast. There was a young Emirati woman that was standing there and I said, pull up a chair and tell me about your life. How does it like, to, what's it like to do business? What does your career path look like? What is the kind of the companies run? I took the advantage to sit down with an Emirati woman and have her explain her perception of being a young woman growing up here and trying to build a career in a future. It was extremely educational for me, but it really reinforced my first point on there, which is this, not everybody thinks Again, I hate it when people come up and, and you know, they see you later. I'm a lot later in my career and people say, well, whatever. People say, well, you must be smarter than me or something that, that's just silly, something that is not true. The point that it illustrates to me is they don't think of themselves as an entrepreneur and they don't think that they can do it. And the reason for that may be cultural. They may never have had anybody tell them. I, that, that they can achieve. They may not have anybody ever tell them that they were capable of the things that they, that the dreams that they have in achieving those things. I have this young, one young woman in Africa that I mentor. We have weekly Skype calls and sometimes she texts me on WhatsApp. But what I got was something that made my day the other day. She said, look, I'm a young woman in, in the old part of Africa where nobody believes in me and they ridicule me because I'm trying to make something more out of my life. I'm trying to start a company in a village where all women have ever done is have babies and make food. And she said, I want to start a business and nobody wants to help me. One of my best days was not business advice. I give her business advice weekly. One of my best days was she sent a message to me and she said, it's just a lonely day here in Africa and I need a Jeff hug. Okay? That made my day because it occurred to me that I was providing somehow, some way, a level of encouragement and support that she needs. Everybody needs that in the entrepreneuring process. So our first step is to help people understand that they can do this, that they can be an entrepreneur and that they can achieve their dreams. So all of you in the room that are not entrepreneurs, you need to take that as your mission. You need to give at least one person an entrepreneurial hug somewhere, if not literally, I mean in terms of helping lift their spirits and helping build their confidence so that they believe in themselves because amazing things happen when smart, capable people suddenly believe they can achieve something. Uh, so that's where it's got to start. By the way, I use this picture. I'm not going to take you through this story today. But mentorship 
is one of the most valuable things people can give. Uh, people call me a lot just, just because I've had successful businesses and just ask me for money. All right? And what, what amazes me is that writing a check, I, I understand there's a lot of things that need funding in the world, but you know what? Writing a check is easy. If all I ever had to do to somebody is write a check and stick it in the mail, never speak to anybody, that's easy. Giving of yourself, making time and giving your energy and your passion to other people takes work. And a lot of people are afraid to do it. For our entrepreneurs in each country to succeed, the rest of you have got to find time to be mentors. I use this picture because early in my life, everybody told me everything that was wrong with me. I, I did not follow the formula because the formula was, Go to school, go to university, get a job, and stay at that company. People were told that to be a success, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer. And those are very successful careers. But I didn't want to do that. What I wanted to do was go out and solve a problem in the world, and then go solve another one and another one. And what everybody said to me was, something is wrong with you. You're not following the rules, you're not doing it right, and you're unstable. And I heard that for years, so I questioned, is something wrong with me? And one day I had this realization. And that's why I use this picture to illustrate it. I wanted to be, I'm going to just use this example, I wanted to be a baseball player when I grew up. But everybody in my life were golfers. So if you go ask all your golfer friends to teach you how to play baseball, how well do you think that's going to go? They're going to tell, you know what they told me? You're a really bad golfer. And one day I said, I don't want to play golf. I want to play baseball. And they all said, oh, well, we all golf, so we'll just show you how to golf. That was the day I realized I need to find mentors who play baseball. So for all you entrepreneurs in the room, if the people in your lives are not giving you the strongest support or are giving you advice, and they are not, these are people that you love, okay? That's not the point. We're talking about your career now. You need to take your advice from people whose lives you want your life to look like, if that makes sense to everybody. You need to, you need to follow and find people who can give you the right kind of advice. I went out and found baseball players, and what I mean by that was all the people in my life were in big corporations and I wanted to be an entrepreneur. The day I figured out I needed to network with and mentor, and you should be networking at this event, everybody in this room, you should be meeting people. When I found baseball players, they didn't say, what's wrong with you, Jeff, you're a horrible golfer. What they said was, wow, you've got a great swing. You're going to be a fantastic baseball player. It is important that you find mentors whose lives you want your life to look like as you grow. And a gentle push, as, as I said. When somebody calls me from Africa and says, send me an electronic hug, I know that I'm doing something that matters in the world. I did not make any money from that transaction. What I did do was make the world a little bit better because who knows what that young lady would achieve, might achieve. I will tell you now, it's six months later, and she has her own television show in six African countries, inspiring and working with young entrepreneurs because she did such a good job launching her company. I think it's a great story. The other thing you need to do in your country is create heroes. After this, today, I'll be over there. We're, we're doing a business plan competition with the GIST entrepreneurs from all these countries that are here that I'll be over there judging. You, we need to create heroes. Entrepreneurs should be the new rock stars, right? In the same way a Richard Branson, or there are various rock stars in every part of the world, you are responsible for creating more rock stars in your country and making more heroes. Education is an obvious one, but I'm going to give you one quick example of it. Entrepreneurs say, give me money. And what I first thing that I say is, if we gave you money today, would you even know what to do with it? Have you ever had any training in your engineering class on financial management? The answer is no. There are skills entrepreneurs need that we need to make sure our communities are providing that level of education. And that's where the academic world comes in. There are more and more entrepreneurship degrees in universities, which I think is really exciting. When I started, I had no help and no idea what I was doing. I just had to guess and fail and guess and fail. Failing is OK, but it's not fun. <laughs> I would rather have somebody helped me through it with the proper education. Infrastructure, we've been talking about that the whole time, so I won't go through it. Obviously, the governments here in the UAE, in the region, in the United States all believe in entrepreneurship and are here to support us, or I wouldn't be here either. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do there. And we all know that access to capital, things like bankruptcy laws in certain countries. When people tell me I would start a company, but if I fail, I might go to jail, I understand that that is an obstacle to starting a company. There are things we need to address in infrastructures within certain regions that make it easier for entrepreneurs to create companies. Public and private partnerships, obviously we just mentioned one, the GIST partnership is a public-private partnership that is working all over the world, very, very successful. That's why I participate in it. 
And last, I want to end with this slide right here. It, it's interesting to me, and I gave you the example before, and I will tell you I was a victim of it. You turn on television and you see events in the news in the world. And they might say, you know, trouble throughout the whole Arab Spring. Trouble breaks out in, the, in this part of the world. Or in your local community. In my case, it was a home for abused women that was closing. And here's what happens. They say on the news, the news reporter says, they're just doing their job. They says, look at this, this home for, bad, for abused women is closing today. And on TV is all these women crying. And then the lady says, coming up next, sports. And I remember thinking to myself, I hope they do something. And then I thought, wait a minute. What if everybody says, I hope they do something? Then who does something? You already know the answer, nobody. So I went into my office the next day and I wrote on the board the words at the top. I wrote, there is no they. And I told my employees, they are never going to do anything because they don't exist. We are they. I am they and you are they. It is our job to solve these problems, not to hope that they fix it. We are here to make the path to entrepreneurship better. We are they. There's no one else that's going to solve the problem if we don't. I want to end with that. I think I've actually finished a speech on time for the first time in my history. My email address is there, and I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks.